Welcome back to this week's video everybody and this week we're going to take a look at UDTs or otherwise known as user defined data types. Now last week we had a look at Siemens PLCs and their data blocks and a data block was simply just a block of code where we could write data to and read data from throughout our program and it allowed us to group data nicely inside of our program. Now other PLCs don't have data blocks, but we do have things called user-defined data types. And user-defined data types are similar to a data block in a sense. Siemens actually have these as well, and you can use these inside of data blocks. But in other PLCs, they give you a similar sort of feel to a data block itself. Now this week, we're gonna have a look at Alan Bradley's RS Logix 5000 and how to create a UDT inside of Alan Bradley's RS Logix 5000. But before we get into this week's video, what I'd like you to do is hit the like button, comment below, and and subscribe so you can stay up to date with more new videos. Now, let's get into this week's video. So as I mentioned just before, we had a look at data blocks inside of Siemens TIA portal, and we created a data block for our high pressure test. So if I just open that block up there, here is our high pressure test data block. And we were storing just different types of data inside of here. So we were storing like the start time, the end time, panel number, start temperature, end temperature, start pressure, end pressure, and the average flow rate. And all of this was being stored inside of one data block called high pressure test. Now, as I mentioned, Siemens also have UDTs as well, but we're not gonna look at Siemens UDTs today. We're gonna have a look at these inside of Alan Bradley to show you how we can create something similar to this inside of RS Logix 5000. Now, the benefit of using a data block is it allows us to group relevant information together. And this allows us to read from it and write to it throughout our program. So if I open up OB1 here, we'll see inside of there, several move instructions, just moving values into our data block and from our data block into another data block. So let me just close this down here. I've got RS Logix 5000 opened at the moment and I've created a new project. If you want to learn how to create a new project, we have a video on that on our YouTube channel and it's how to set up an Alan Bradley project. Now, when we looked at Alan Bradley previous, we showed you how to create things like timers. Now, if you actually look at a timer, what I'll do here is I'll just create a timer here and I'll just create an internal bit and I'll just call it a uh, test and we'll just uh, create a new bit like so. And what I'll do is I'll go to our time account folder and I'll add a TON and the timer asks us to give it a name. So we'll just call this Chris Dully. Okay. And when I right click this and I say new, it asks me to give it a data type. The data type is a timer. Now, if you really think about it, that timer is very similar to a UDT. And I'll show you what we, we mean by that in a second. So if I just say OK to that, and I give it the value 10,000 for 10 seconds and the accumulator just left at zero. If we go into our program tags, there's our Chris delay and there's our timer. Now, if we look at a standard bit, here we created that test bit before, we just gave that a Boolean data type and a Boolean data type is either true or false. What a timer is, it's similar to a UDT, it's similar to a table of data. If we extract that Chris delay, if we open that up, you can see inside of there several different signals that we can use inside of our timer data type. And you can see there's several different types of data types as well. So we've got the preset, which is the double integer. We've got the accumulator, which is a double integer. We've got an enable, Boolean, a timer timing bit, Boolean, and a done bit, Boolean. And then we can access that throughout our program. That is very similar to a UDT. We can create something similar to this as well. Now to create a UDT, it's inside of this data types folder here. And inside of there, you should see a folder called user defined. This is where we can create our user defined data types. You might also hear the term user defined tables. People sometimes call UDTs user defined tables as well. It's very similar. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a def user defined table or a user defined data type for my pressure test. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have this UDT used for multiple different types of pressure tests. So last week we explained how we worked with a client to develop a system that did pressure testing. And that pressure testing happened in three ways. You had a low pressure test, a medium pressure test, and a high pressure test. Now, last week we developed a data block for our high pressure test so we could write information to it and pull information from it. Well, if you think about each pressure test, low, medium, and high, we're gonna be taking the same data from that pressure test. So what we can do is we can create one data type 
and then we can use that data type for three different registers inside of our program, low pressure, medium pressure, high pressure, and then it'll just utilize the individual data types inside of that UDT. Let me create one and we'll show you how it's all done. So when we see the user defined folder, if we right click that and say new data type, we can also import data types as well. So if we created one that we want to use elsewhere, we can then export that data type and then import it to another program, which is pretty useful. I'm going to just select new data type and it's going to ask us for a name and I'm just going to call this pressure test. I'm not going to call this high pressure test. I'm not going to call this low or medium. I'm just going to call it pressure test because it can be used for low, medium or high. It's just a general pressure test. And if I wanted to, I can give it a description on what this is. I'm just going to leave the description blank. Where we see the name, this is where we are going to enter our data fields. So let's just say in my pressure test, I'm going to be collecting the following information. I'm going to be collecting start pressure. And that data type is going to be a real value, which is decimal point. I'm going to be collecting end pressure. And that is also going to be a real value. I then want to collect, um, let's say, start temperature. And that's going to be a real value as well. I want to collect end temperature, another real value. I also want to collect the panel number that I'm uh, going to be testing. That there's going to be an integer. And I also want to collect the uh, passed or failed signal. So passed, and that's going to be simply a Boolean, something that's going to be on or off and I want to create failed as well. And that's going to be a Boolean as well. Whoops, Boolean, not book. There we go. So here I've got seven different data types and I'm going to be creating three of each. That'll be 21 different data registers I need to assign in my program. What I've done is I've just created one global data type, which we can then access internally for these different data registers. It's a nice way of um, just again, grouping our data together. Now, before we can use this inside of the program, what I have to do here is just click apply and then say, okay. And when I do that, it'll close down that data type. And if we just then expand our user defined folder, there is our data type ready to go. So now if I open up my program tags here and I then type in the following low pressure test, I then enter in a next one, which is gonna be medium pressure test and then enter in a final one called high pressure test. You'll notice that it's already pre-assigned uh, data types to these which are double integers. I'm going to change these in a second. To change these, what we then do is we then just click these three dots and if we scroll down this data type list, we should then see near the P's pressure test and that there is our user defined data type. That's our UDT. If I select that and then just say OK, our data type pressure test is now enabled. So then if I just copy this, whoops, and then paste that there and paste that there, we are now using my UDT for my low pressure test, medium pressure test, and high pressure test. So as I've just mentioned there, this pressure test is just a nice way of grouping data together. So if we now expand my low pressure test data type, you can now see inside of there, all of the different registers that I created for my UDT. And then you can see inside of there the different data types that I have. I've got real, I've got integer, and I've got Boolean, all encompassed inside of that low pressure test folder. If I open up medium pressure test, there is the same information. And high pressure test, there is the same information again, used multiple times. So now what I have is three data types utilizing one global area. And this makes my program just a little bit easier to write instead of having 21 different data registers inside of the PLC. So now if I go to main routine and let's just uh, remove this timer, I can go back to my program tags. I can delete that timer as well. Not interested in that anymore. If I then go to my move folder, there it is there, and I add in the move instruction, I can then start moving data. So if I then just start moving values, let's just say um, three, and I want to move that three into my panel number for my low medium, for my low pressure test, all I would do here is just type in low, and you can see there's my low pressure test appear. Now if I just enter that, 
it's going to give me errors and that's because I'm trying to access the low pressure test as a whole and as we know there's several different data types inside of there I need to tell the PLC which data type I want to access. Just like when you've got timers and you want to access the done bit you have to tell it you want to access that done bit. So to do that we just do a dot and then we can then tell it what we want. So if we drop that down we can see the different types of uh, data that we can access inside of here and if we look there we can see low pressure test dot panel number. So if I just click that and enter now the errors disappear and I'm ready to move through to my low pressure test panel number. If I then just uh, branch down from here again, drag this across, add in another move instruction. And let's just say I want to move 25.0 and I want to do that inside of my low pressure test and I want to do that inside of the start pressure. I can do that there as well. So now I'm moving a decimal value, a floating point value, 25.0, into my start pressure. Let's copy that again, and then drop this down once more, and then add in another move instruction, and then set up the test temperature, the start temperature, and we'll say it was 23.6, for example. There we go. And we're going to do low pressure test again. Dot start temp. There we go. And what I'll also do is I will then turn on a bit as well. So let's just drop that down once more. Let's go to my bit folder and then add in a coil and we'll just turn on the low pressure test and we'll turn on its past bit. There we go. So what I've now done here is when my test bit here turns on, three is going to be moved into the panel number, which is an integer. 25 and 23.6 are going to be moved into the start pressure from the start temp, which is floating point. And then I'm also turning on a bit inside of that one UDT. Now one thing that we can do is we can then transfer data from my low pressure UDT effectively into my high pressure UDT. And to do that, all we would then do, just copy that, paste that over there. And instead of sourcing the three, we would then source the low pressure test and we would do, let's say, panel number. And let's say we wanted to shift that into the high pressure test panel number as well. We could do that. And let's just delete the other ones. There we go. So if I then turn on test two, that's when that happens. So I can transfer data from inside that um, data type and move it to another similar data type. So then just accept that, okay that. So let's just save that. And then what we're gonna do is download this to the PLC. So we'll just go to who active and then just select the driver that we have. And there we go. And then let's just download that to the PLC. And then switch it back to remote run. And now we're ready to go. So if I then just right click this bit and I toggle that bit, what we should then see is where we see low pressure test panel number, start pressure and start temp, as well as the pass signal, we should then see those registers then fill up with 3, 25.0, 23.6, and also then turn on. So 3, 2, 1. There we go. And we can see now that the low pressure test dot panel number has three inside of it. Low pressure test start pressure has 25.0, 23.6, and we can see our past bit is then turned on. So then we can influence those data registers inside of that UDT for our low pressure test. So UDTs are very similar to data blocks in a sense that we can create a table where we can store data inside of there and then use that table throughout the program. We can then write to it to different data registers. We can then read from it throughout the program as well. It just makes it a little bit easier for us when managing data inside of the system. As I mentioned though, Siemens also has UDTs as well. So they don't just use data blocks. They've got UDTs too. And UDTs can then be implemented inside the data blocks for more advanced control and we might have a look at that next week if you like the video give the video a like it helps us out quite a bit comment below what you'd like to see next time and then also hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more and new videos i'll see you all next time